Uh, we'll speak to Jason just in just a moment, uh, who's uh, started a fundraiser on GoFundMe for, for people who've been uh, caught by the devastation in the South. Uh, we'll have a look at a video first, and then we'll talk to Jason about uh, his experience of what's going on there um, in the uh, south of the country at the moment. So here's the video. Uh, let's take a look at this and see what's going on. Passaram dois aviões, conseguiram apagar um bocadinho, mas que ele continue já estava, já tinha saltado para o lado, para o topo do nosso terreno, é, onde está o dia. Okay, uh, Jason joins me now. Good, good morning to you, Jason. Hi, Carl. Uh, it's been a while since we've spoken, um, and not on not for the best of reasons this morning. Uh, ab absolutely hideous to see that. Uh, there's no other word for it. Uh, and you've been caught up in your part of Portugal. Thanks for being with us this morning. Uh, good to be here, Carl. It's been a while. <coughs> so, yeah, uh, we're. Well, I'm actually up in San Bajero de Mar which mm -hmm. is um, just near Sao Titonio, which was like the north the north end of where the fires were. Uh -huh. And um, so Sao Titonio is kind of a big farming town, and then it goes down to uh, Odisseish, which is a really lovely uh, town on the sort of Alentejo, Algarve border, and that was like the south part of the, the fires. It did, they did continue a bit further south than that heading towards Al Jazeera but that that was the main area where it was affected and a bunch of a bunch of uh, valleys in between um Odessa and San Antonio uh, I'm in um San Bajero de Mar which is next to the ocean and uh, we didn't get uh, we were very close we were about 6k from the fires but we were basically protected from from the fires by we've got a lot of open farmland between us and where the fires were happening uh -huh. so uh, we it was close but we weren't evacuated but another village just down the road Brejau, for example a few k's down the road was was evacuated so we were very close we had ash dropping on our land and um and these you know it was it, it felt close and enough to get my family evacuated but i stayed on the land Wow. I mean, that must just be awful to be in that situation, not knowing whether to stay or go. I guess sometimes you don't, don't get a choice. You just get evacuated by the emergency services who clearly did a, an amazing job. I mean, they, they are incredible, they aren't did. they? You see this unfolding on Fogosh.pt. Odesesh, I think, is probably the most is the key word, isn't it? That's what the, the fire was generally known as, I think, in the media and, and, and as it was reported. I'm so it actually glad broke out. It actually broke out right next to Odesesh. So, um, OK. On Saturday evening, it started, and and um, it, for us, it was we were drive. We actually happened to be driving from um, from our home to Al Jazeera, which is in the Algarve South, uh, yeah. on Saturday evening. And uh, so we drove. We were driving to Al Jazeera in the evening when, just as we reached Al Jazeera, we started seeing all these emergency vehicles passing us on the road, and we were like, "Oh, looks like there's a fire." Yeah. Um, we didn't know, and then late that evening, it started to filter to it back to us that there was a big fire happening in Odisseish. It started just next to the, the main road in the woods uh, inland from there. And um, by that evening, we weren't actually able to drive back home because they closed the road off because that whole area was was well under underway by then. So even that first night, we had to find um, shelter with some friends who were based in Algezor. So, yeah, it all happened very quickly. Yeah. And uh, I don't think anyone was really expecting it. So the fact that nobody died is amazing the response from firefighters was amazing and uh, we've you know we're everyone in the communities got a lot of respect for the for the bomberos mm, absolutely and uh, um, it's important that people do what they can to support them um bottled water i believe protein bars these are sort of things to help them 
in in the um, heat of the moment, literally, um, to keep them going and keep them supported. And of course, any other fundraising that goes on, your your fundraising is slightly different, I think. And uh, you put it quite beautifully, poignantly, um, it's, you know, with, with a, a sort of hint of tragedy, really, of course, which it is um, for the people I think who've, who who um, have been affected the most. And or what was what was the phrase you used that have lost the most and have the least now as a result of the fire? Um, I'm not sure exactly how I put it, but, um, I mean, I just had something along the lines of, um, and I think Karl Marx probably said it a long time before I did, um, to, to those, uh, to those who need the most from, from, from those who have the most in a way, I suppose, is the sentiment. Yes. Uh, to each according to their means. No, to each according to their needs, from each according to their means, is what Karl Marx said. And I've often yeah. thought that that's a beautiful uh, way of putting it and how, how the world should work. But, yeah, our focus is, we just said, there's a lot of people who've been badly affected. And obviously the people who've been affected the most, uh, who've lost the most, you know, we'll try to yeah. help them as much as possible. Um, there's also going to be a lot of people in, the, in, that com in our community who've lost something and we'd like to help them too. You know, it all depends on really on how well the, the fundraiser goes well it's going fairly well so far isn't it you've raised seventeen thousand six hundred euros of a target of a hundred thousand and that's that's the difficulty always here isn't it is when the when the kind of media spotlight and people's lives have moved on those who've been left with their land and homes devastated still have to face they have to carry on don't they and sort of pick up the pieces so that's i'm guessing that's what this is about to give them um, some resources and get them back on track uh, and That's this right. is the fundraiser that you've got here. We've seen the video. And as you say, between August the 5th and August the 8th, 2023, wildfires ripped through rural communities based around Odesej and Sal Teotonio, uh, causing massive damage to homes, rural tourism projects and farms. So a lot of devastation on people's daily lives there. Over 1,400 people were evacuated from their homes. National Civil Protection Service said about 1,000 firefighters, 320 vehicles and nine aircraft. Uh, were de deployed approximately 10,000 hectares. That's 25,000 uh, acres were scorched. So that gives you a sense of, of the scale there. Um, the mission, the relief fund, will help those who've been directly impacted by the wildfires. Our primary focus is to assist those who have lost the most and have the least. There's that phrase there. Um, and direct aid for uninsured fire victims, because, of course, there, there will always be those people who have been caught out like that. Your contribution will directly provide shelter, food, clothing, and essential supplies for those who have lost everything. And there are those people, are they, who've lost everything there, Jason? Oh, yeah, there are. And um, and that's that's the tragedy. I'm on a, I'm on a few WhatsApp uh, groups where sort of people in the community have all, are, are all communicating and stuff. So I'm, every day we're sort of seeing and hearing from people who have, you know, they've got, they were, they were evacuated and then they went back um, a few days ago or they're still heading back now. They're still trying to get back sometimes. And uh, yeah, they've lost, they've lost everything. So they're on pieces of land. Sometimes it's their own land and property, and sometimes it's just where they were living. And yeah. so, in some cases, it's people whose homes have been have been destroyed. Uh, in other cases, it's people who are living there. You know, like in more of a community situation, uh, maybe with a, something like a caravan or a trailer, and they've seen those come back, and that's been raised to the ground. So they're, you know, literally homeless, nothing left. Um, there's there's a there's one family um that we that we that we're friends with who've they've been here 14 years they have a, a legal house um and they've been since they've been here they've been slowly building up their own uh, rural tourism business uh building beautiful wooden cabins like the most beautiful wooden cabins for guests to come and stay in and uh, they've raised their children here and they've got beautiful permaculture gardens and animals and all of this and they've they've just come back and it's all gone. It's like, oh, no. it's, it's, <clears throat> it's shocking. It's brutal. Right. And of course, people, those who have been insured, it's not like they're going to be helped out immediately. These processes take a long time, don't they, to, to get everything back together again. Um, and exactly. Yeah, yeah. Criticism as well, hasn't there? The, you know, the government response hasn't been brilliant. We're in August, aren't we? In Where not a lot happens in Portugal anyway. And some might say the government haven't responded very quickly anyway uh, with this. So it's really important, isn't it, that the help comes in. I'm not just, it's not a political bash. It just seems to be the nature of things. Um, the help that's needed is if it's coming from the big institutions won't come immediately and you're doing a real sort of grassroots move here and making sure people get su supported, I think, as quickly as possible. Is that the gist of it? 
exactly the, the, these these things take time um to go through the official channels and there's you know we're seeing in the groups that local local sort of people from the cameras and and so on are are asking questions and starting to collect they're starting to collect information they want to really want they want to hear from people who've got official official houses with um habitation license and stuff and let us know what's been what what's been if you've lost your house and so on because this is the beginning of the you know the the claims process mm -hmm. but however however i mean we're already starting to see like in many cases it's people let's say the houses were saved because the again the bomberos were very good they were coming in they were they were spraying people dropping water on houses and stuff to protect to protect homes and many homes were saved because of this which is fantastic but mm -hmm. at the same time you know it's not just that like if you're living up in the hills here You've got a ton of land, you've got solar systems, you've got outbuildings, you've got farm equipment, you've got uh, all this stuff. And, you know, this stuff gets raised to the ground as well, uh, even if your house was saved. So uh, it's it's complicated and that stuff's going to take time. And then, of course, there's all the people who were living there who were living um, without official buildings, who built cabins or were living in caravans. They're not going to have any insurance. They're not going to be entitled to any kind of handout. So, yeah, we'd, we definitely want to be quick to help people who are you know if in a in a they're displaced now and they're in a pretty desperate situation and the community's coming together a lot already Good. there's kind of there's a at odx is a bar in odisage and um there's there's a drop-off center there for example so people can drop off uh, food and clothing and tools uh, whatever people are saying hey i you know does anybody have a mountain bike my bike's got destroyed blah 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 so we're seeing the community that's always the first response isn't it mm. and um and we hope we're trying to be a first response too you know because this is when people are really really need help and they also need help with helping hands you know it's like people are saying can someone come with back to my place and help you know literally help me um start cleaning up the mess but on that on that front there's also a health risk as uh, element and with all this fresh ash um it's actually super risky to be back there cleaning up disturbing on this ash is quite toxic so there there are people uh chip there's a little mini fund going to buy um buy respirator masks and stuff so people can go back to their the, the land and actually just start cleaning up without you know, putting themselves in oh, health yes. risks. Well, that's there's that as well, isn't there? I mean, this is depressing to be in that ongoing situation, landscape, if you like. That's it's going to take a long time for the landscape to recover, isn't it? And that's where people's lives and homes used to be, where their lives are now, and they have to live in that. It takes years for the it takes years for the land to recover. And I I even um, heard someone say, and I hadn't even thought of this that. In some cases, when there's been it's so devastated, it's not even safe to start rebuilding immediately. It sometimes takes two or three years just for the land to recover to the point where you're actually able to start um, rebuilding on there. Yeah, it's, it's wow. uh, there's so much, so much ash and toxic. So stuff. glad to hear that n that nobody perished in that, but it's clearly yeah. a lot of devastation and people's lives uh, quite uh, undermined and, and destroyed. In fact. Um, and if possible, do please help with uh, this GoFundMe that Jason's part of here. Look, someone's put in five grand. It's amazing, isn't it? What can amazing. happen in these sort of circumstances? Um, we've got a few comments coming in as well. Just shows uh, how amazing the Bombero Shah McDonald's is doing free meals for firefighters until the end of August. <laughs> Mc Bombero uh, there. I remember driving through smoke back in 2005 when we were house hunting. It was scary. I think everyone who lives in Portugal has some sense of this, don't they? Even if it's in the distance and you see a massive smoke plume, it's like, shit, this is real. When, when it gets as real as this, it's, it's just so sort of moving and devastating. Um, I remember driving back then, says, uh, says Pam, 2005 house hunting. It was scary and influenced the choice of where to live. Sad to see another bad year, which is perhaps how it's looking at the moment. Um, make sure you've got Fogosh.pt, everybody, as well, so you know where the fires are. It's a very good app. And a very good service to keep people informed of what's going on you know where the when the fire started what state it's in how many personnel are attending to it and when it's resolved gary saying after last year's fire i can understand the scale of devastation how quickly fire can spread and how scary they can be the bomberos says pete they're just so amazing and are always there so quickly on the scene as you can see on fogosh as mentioned fogosh.pt so sad that so many are asked and there well there is that as well 
I mean, it's just horrible to think that somebody would do that. Um, I have heard of timed incendiary devices to go off at night. It's just dreadful, that, isn't it, if that is the case. Um, last year, en an engineer was arrested for creating such time delayed devices. My goodness, they would start a fire when, when he was far, so he couldn't be blamed. Unbelievable. Um, it's a good um, warning to make sure you have a habitation license and good insurance. Well, in an ideal world, yes. Uh, but, you know, we are where we are, and some people don't have that, and they need help. At the moment, Fogelstock.pt is not working on mobile phones at present. Thank you that, for that heads up on that, uh, Pete. Well, Jason, thank you. It's good to see you, albeit in these uh, terrible circumstances. Um, well done, mate, for putting this together and uh, helping people. Uh, is there anything else you want to add? Um, I looked uh, just just a quick comment on uh, just a quick comment on some of the comments that we made. I don't personally know too much about the. Um, the stuff about the arson and the incendiary devices. I mean, as you say, if, if people are doing that, that's horrendous. And yeah. there have been stories about people doing that for their own reasons, whether it's an insurance job. But um, I think one of the things that isn't talked about enough is uh, is why these fires happen. And um, I mean, we know, know that in a country like Portugal, I mean, cork oaks literally evolved because of forest fires you know protecting themselves from that sort of stuff but yeah. you do get fires in this part of the world and um and that's and forested areas but we need to remember that a lot of the problems here is is caused by um the eucalyptus plantations the monocultures that we have in portugal yeah. i mean basically most of this area that was was burnt to a crisp followed you know a line of um of eucalyptus a uh, eucalyptus is it's 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 not native to portugal it's it's uh, you know it's 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 planted in vast monocultures um for the uh, toilet paper industry mm -hmm. um and eucalyptus has this extremely um high burning temperature bark that drops off and it starts these incredibly powerful and hot fires that are, dev that are so devastating and yeah. that with more more endemic species and if you had more natural forestation these these fires would be a lot easier to control and be a lot smaller so yeah. um th on the political front i'd say there's a th it doesn't get talked about enough and this is something that a lot of the people here a lot of these people in these communities who are being affected are have been buying pieces of land with eucalyptus uh, plantations on them, and they're actively trying to get the eucalyptus off again, you know, and reforest okay. with, with native species, stuff like this. So um, I think we have to remember that a lot of the people who have been affected are also a lot of the, trying to be part of the solution to yeah. why these these horrendous fires are happening. And, awesome. um, and it's in the face of, uh, yeah, some big, some big... Uh, well, interests and interest commercial interests yeah that's uh, not talked about enough i think so that would be my closing comments is i think everybody should like figure learn a bit more about why these fires are happening and it's well not said just, uh, yeah well said and well put inevitable. mate yeah and and that's the long term i mean you, you there you are you're, you're covering all the angles here helping people who need help right now uh, and anyone who takes part uh, contributes to this gofundme will be doing that to give uh, people who need help most of the help as soon as possible as well and it sounds like there's an amazing sort of grassroots level support going on in the area which we see in portugal which is so wonderful um in communities and the long-term picture definitely something needs to be done about that and we'll, we'll keep our eye on that and talk about that it, it just it's, it's insane isn't it to have a, a tin you know have the conditions we have um in terms of the the, the propensity for wildfires to occur and then actually lay on the most uh, flammable of uh, monocultural species in massive yeah. plantations once it gets going. It's, it's insane, really. Uh, but not the only insane thing that's going on for humanity at the moment. But <laughs> bit, well, hopefully well, we can say that again. <laughs> yes, hopefully we can uh, you know, reset that. And, and that, of course, is what uh, a lot of the work that the people who are sort of permaculturally minded and so on, as you say, were trying to do before this even started. So uh, it's um... well, one, fi one final thing that I'd say about that, because you just yeah. mentioned permaculture is um, um, some friends of my wife's uh, were in the area that was involved and they were, they were some of the most um, established and, and active permaculturalists who've been doing their best to transform their land from, you know, what would have been um, eucalyptus heavy um, mon monocultures to yeah. um, 
properly managed and and well well established diversity and yes. their their land was virtually untouched during these fires like the yes. land protected itself because yes. the land had, had been had been given the the opportunity to do that yeah so we yeah that's where we should be going absolutely in in palmella there was a terrible fire uh it might have been two years ago now uh, and I spoke to uh, people who, I mean, you know, it, it, it's a similar sort of story. Uh, they'd moved in there with the best of intentions. They they had a fire come up to their land from elsewhere, uh, uh, pretty much in, in the pattern we're describing here. Uh, but the planting they'd done in a more indigenous and mixed way was untouched and intact, as you say. Um, it, I, I, you know, and we saw an area, a drone photograph of it, of, of a lush green mixed forest from overhead in a landscape of just you know charred charred stumps of, of a plantation around it so there's we've got we've got the know-how haven't we it's just the will i think to, to put this into practice really absolutely absolutely we have to we have to drop this oh well this is what this is just what happens and this is how it's always happened it's not the case you know mm. this is this is um this is this is what we've created and it's it's up to us to 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 fix it yeah. Okay. Jason, um, good to see you and uh, uh, love to you and Isabel and, and your family there and uh, Thanks, the best to, to all the best to people in the area there who you're helping. So yeah, pop back if you can, let us know how things are going and if there's any more help people can offer. Um, take care, mate. We'd love to. Cheers, Thanks, mate. Care. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. ciao, ciao. Right, uh, Jason Horton there. Uh, the GoFundMe link will, uh, I'll put that up again before the end of the show. We've kept Philomena waiting, but I suspect uh, she'll be she'll be very understanding about this particular situation. Let's give her a nice big round of applause. 